Hey everyone, welcome to my office. It's time for my long-awaited office tour that I've been promising you all. I wanted to wait until I got moved into my new house and everything set up, and this is the first time I've actually had an office to give a tour of, and I'm so, so excited that I finally have this space. Before I had this office, I was just doing work everywhere, so our living room, our bedroom, wherever I could find the space to work, and I worked only on my laptop, so this is the first time I have an actual desktop setup, and it's been very, very nice. I highly recommend <laughs> getting an office or setting aside room for your office if you have the chance, but I'll get to everything in a minute. I'm going to start here with my computer, and I forgot to mention I'm recording this video on my phone. I don't have a GoPro or anything like that, so please forgive me if the camera is a little shaky or if my finger enters the frame or anything like that, but this is my desk. I got this desk from Home Depot online. It was like 280 or $300, but I'm very, very happy with the quality of the desk for the price, and it has a ton of storage. Up here, I have Mailzium postcards. I'll show you more of those in a second, and down here, I actually have Civil War letters, believe it or not. Uh, I just have these in the shelf right here, so, and I don't have anything on top of them, of course, so they don't get damaged, and I have them in a space where they're they will hopefully, or they will be protected from the sunlight from the window right there. So I am looking for a storage solution for these, but I haven't really found anything because they're not normal letter sized or normal paper size. If you know any type of album and storage page, like sleeve or something that I can put these letters in, please let me know because I want to get those protected and preserved, but they'll just have to be there for now. And oh yeah, it's Christmas year round in my office. This is my little tree. Eventually, maybe I'm going to put a bigger tree somewhere over here, but I love Christmas. It's my favorite time of year and my favorite holiday by far. So I have a Christmas tree in pretty much every room in our house that I spend a lot of time in. This is my computer setup. On the left, that is a laptop that I use for non-postcard related work, other freelance work and stuff like that. In the middle are the two computers that I use for listing postcards. And I'll show you, sit down and show you a little bit of what I do here. The computer I use is a Mac Mini. Uh, I just prefer Mac over Windows, and the Mac Mini is just about the cheapest desktop Mac that you can get. Uh, I obviously don't need a lot of computing power for listing postcards, so I opted to go with the Mac Mini there. This is normally what my screen looks like when I'm listing postcards. On the left there, I will have drafts of postcards waiting to be listed or the listings that I'm working with currently. And I just use eBay to list postcards. I don't use any third-party listing software or anything like that. Then on the other screen when I'm listing postcards, I will pretty much always have images of the postcards that I am listing pulled up. And that's just so I can, uh, well, it's actually, there's a few different reasons why I have that up. So I have these postcards pulled up at first to title every single one. So I do my listings I do one thing at a time when I'm listing postcards for every single listing. So the first thing I'll do is prepare usually 50 to 100 drafts, depending on how many I want to list. I will fill in all the item specifics and SKUs for those, and then I'll add pictures, and then I will title every single one of my listings. And when I'm titling, I just go through the pictures right here of the postcards and look at the front and look at the back to title it. And I also look at these when I am pricing the postcard so I can see any damage on it or uh, just remind myself exactly what the view looks like. So usually I'm listing on one screen and doing price research on one screen, and I have the postcard images pulled up on the other screen. And this right here is my iPad. I just use that for watching YouTube or listening to a podcast or whatever entertainment I can turn on while I am working. This on the right, and I'm so sorry if the camera is shaking. I'm trying to hold it steady the best I can, but... Uh, I don't know if it's going very well. This on the right is my scanner, and some people are asking me what type of scanner I got. This is the Epson ES580W. I believe there is a model called the Epson ES400 that does not have Wi-Fi that's just as good as this one. So if you don't need the Wi-Fi feature, get that one. And I actually wish I would have got that one because I'm not using the Wi-Fi on it at all since I got everything hardwired in here. But that's my new scanner right there. On the right are those Mailzium postcards that were all in the shelf that I said I was going to show you. I had this artwork done by Rick Geary. So he has been doing the artwork for postcard shows 
for over 45 years now since he started with the Wichita show, I believe. But he's a very, very well-known artist, and he's done so many huge things. I think he did artwork for um, Gumby, and he's done, like, some superhero artwork. But he is super famous, and he did this artwork for me. Um, and I commissioned it and was able to get it printed on postcards that I now put in my eBay orders. But I'm also looking for new postcard people to trade postcards with. So if you have any postcards that you have printed of your own artwork or photos or anything like that, let me know and I can send you uh, some of mine. Because I have a lot more other than that. This is the only Rick Geary I have, but I have a lot more of like photos I've taken and stuff like that. Uh, down here is just miscellaneous type storage. On the left is a postcard collection that I bought out recently, and I just haven't got to putting in regular boxes and putting on my shelves back in the other corner of my office. On the right, those are thermal labels in the box and some magnifying glasses for looking at RPPCs and other types of postcards up close. I don't know how I accumulated all these magnifying glasses, but and I actually have one or two that aren't up here. <laughs> so I have at least five or six magnifying glasses for looking at postcards up close. On the top of that right there is my brother label printer. I don't know if you can really see that, but I use that brother for printing the SKU numbers that I put on boxes of postcards, just like that and like that. Um, I probably could, oh, I, actually, I don't know if I could use my Rolo for that, but I just like the little brother that I use, <laughs> little brother. Uh, down here is just a miscellaneous junk type cable drawer that I've tossed a few things in. On the top there is a CD drive, actually. I don't know if I will ever need to use that. I don't even know why I bought it, actually, or I can't remember why I bought it, but just have a bunch of different things there that I will probably never, ever use. Um, in here, I have my heater for the colder months of the year that will be put away for a long long time as we're getting into the summer here <laughs> um, but yeah this is my computer setup now behind me I have the area where I use to print labels and uh, this is my postcard my original postcard cabinet where I have most of my inventory listed inventory stored this is my Rolo. Like I said, I have that scanner and my Rolo are now connected via a wire. That's the wire down there to my computer. I did try to connect them via Wi-Fi at first and I was having trouble because I have a Google Nest up here and that's like mesh Wi-Fi and some of these older devices don't work well with mesh Wi-Fi because there are a few different access points and they're like, they get like connected to the wrong one and they're on a different one than the computer and they get all confused. So I just decided to hardwire everything and I'm very glad I did that because I've had no problems at all. So if you are in a space where you're not working on a laptop that you have to move and you have a desktop, com desktop computer, I highly recommend hardwiring everything in. But like I said, this is my original postcard cabinet. I have every SKU down here. Um, I don't know if you can see that, starting at 1 to 1600 in all of these boxes, 24 total boxes going up to 24,350. Each of these boxes holds about um, 500 postcards sleeved. So even though the SKUs go up to over 24,000, there's probably only about 12,000 postcards in here. And the rest of the list of listed postcards I have are right over here. I have over 17,000 up on eBay right now. Um, and you can see them right here on the shelf. I am running out of storage space a little bit. So in, you know, maybe a couple months or a little bit longer, I'm definitely going to have to figure something else out or maybe move these boxes and put some postcards up there. But right now, this is inventory that I cherry picked to list on eBay. So um, yeah, these are just postcards that I thought were neat. Flip through a few of them right there. Um, got some RPVCs, Chrome, stuff like that. But a lot of these I pull, and I don't know what that one is. That one looks pretty neat though. <laughs> Can't resist looking at it now. But uh, yeah, I pulled a lot of these postcards months or years ago. This is just kind of my back stock and what I'm working with now to list. And all of this will eventually be up on eBay, fingers crossed. Um, so this is where I spend over 95% of my day in this little space. 
Uh, well, that makes it sound bad. <laughs> I spend over 95% of my day in this amazing space, this new office I have, um, usually working on the computer, listing postcards, or doing something else, or doing other type of work, and then I have all my listed inventory behind me. But in the other space in my office, this little space in the middle, I have this couch here. Honestly, I don't know what I'm going to do with this couch. It was, I just bought it on Amazon. It was really cheap. And I just wanted to have some other place to sit down in here besides my desk chair. But right now it's not, I mean, it's just looking at the cabinet, which will be nice in the winter with that little fireplace there. But I am, I kind of want to put like a little TV off there or something. I don't really know what I'm going to do with this. But over here, I have all of my shipping supplies. A lot of people have asked me how I ship postcards so i'm going to try and show you that right now right here are my eco swift six and a half by four and a half mailers and this is what i ship every single postcard in that sells for below twenty dollars and that goes via ebay standard envelope now the ones that sell for over twenty dollars or the orders that have to get shipped ground advantage i ship in these but i don't only ship them in these so this is the process when a postcard is listed for over twenty dollars in sales i first put it in a soft sleeve then i put it in a top loader then i put that in the eco swift 6.5 by 4.5 then i put that in this ebay mailer and this is uh if i can get one out here this is a five by seven ebay mailer um I just get them with my monthly uh, shipping coupon, and I don't think I've really paid for them in a very long time, but I recommend if you have a store that's, I think, at least like the $20 a month store, getting those with your uh, shipping supply coupon. So those are shipping supplies right there. Here are the labels that I use for SKUs and put on every single one of my postcards. I have 31,000 to 50,000 sitting up here right now. I did not print all of these labels myself. I bought them on eBay. The seller who I bought them from, there were a lot of sellers overseas, but I looked for one in the U.S. that could just do a custom order and get it to me pretty quickly. So the seller that I got these from, I think the, these were between $100 and $200, I think, maybe even under $100. But I ordered SKUs 20000 to 50000 from this one seller. And I highly recommend that you, if you want to go with the label method instead of the method that other postcard sellers use, I highly recommend that you order these type of labels on eBay instead of doing them yourself because they were dirt cheap and I saved a ton of time. I can't imagine doing all of these with my Rolo, even though I know it's possible. It just saved me so much time. And these are my soft sleeves. I put every single one of my listed postcards in a soft sleeve and then slap an inventory label on it. And then these are top loaders. I only use top loaders for my high dollar postcards that are listed for over $20. And I only put them in top loaders after they sell. So I've never had a postcard in a box get damaged yet. If I do, I may change my mind, but they're all in sleeves. So they're pretty well protected. And I don't think it's necessary to put them in a top loader. These right here are some of my personal postcard collection that I just haven't really got around to organizing or putting in an album or a box. Um, this is our cat bed. Well, my cat bed, I should say. It's pretty cool, actually. So the cats can go in there and hide, but they can't anymore because they, uh, they are not allowed in this room anymore because they kept eating my plants. So the cats are outside of this room now and will be staying there, unfortunately, for them. Uh, this is where I have the rest of my storage, postcard backstock storage and shipping supplies. On the bottom two shelves, I have mostly shipping supplies, uh, but some other types of supplies too. So these two boxes right here are top loaders, got some sleeves, more top loaders. Uh, I believe those are EcoSwifts, and then I got some eBay 5x7 mailers there, I think, and some 6x8s which I bought when the 5x7s were out of stock, and hopefully I'll get to use those one day. Uh, this is a lot of back stock that I have. I recently bought all these boxes to put uh, all my back stock in, which I finally did, and as you can see, I have a lot more over there that we'll be getting to. Uh, older boxes like this are boxes that I got when I bought out other 
um, dealers or collectors or things like that and just inherited them. That's my old scanner up there. <laughs> uh, these are my personal collection albums. So I have, I do personally collect postcards and I have about four or five albums right now. Not all of them are full. I think maybe I have total, it's hard to say, maybe 500 postcards in my personal collection, but one manufacturer I do like collecting is Wayne Paper Box and Printing Corp, as you can see there, but just some other towns and cities that are important to me, I personally collect. And so this room does have air conditioning, and I'll prove it, there's where it comes in. But this room is so big, and it only has this one small little vent up there that it does not get cool enough, and I was basically dying in here the first few weeks uh, that I spent in here, so I got this nifty little um window air conditioner unit that i use right here to keep my office cool and livable and this is the rest of my back stock that i i've gone through some of this to some degree some of this is categorized by state but it's pretty much a mess right now and you can see some of these are like from buyouts of dealers uh all these are categorized by state if if they were already categorized by state like this i didn't really think it'd be worth it to mess with it because I don't have I'm not any better organized than that so I just left it like it was but all these are from like other dealer buyouts and stuff like that uh I got a few of those from collectors I think um but these are other postcards that I got from you know that were all mixed together these are from who knows where these are just all my back stock from yeah wherever but i have some of this categorized better than others as you can see this one's just banger pa new old stock miscellaneous a lot of the boxes are just miscellaneous this is a lot of maine and then miscellaneous uh u.s views mostly u.s views florida illinois so some of them are categorized some of them are not categorized at all and uh it could be anything in there but most everything that i have are U.S. state views just because that's what I primarily buy and that's what I primarily sell. So very little of it is like floral and holidays and stuff like that. Um, this entire box is Edward Mitchell, so mostly early California, but I bought a collection from a collector who collector who a collector who collected all Edward Mitchell postcards. So that's pretty cool. Um, you can see there some of my other back stock. A lot of these are great postcards. I just haven't had the time to like go through them and pull out ones to list and stuff like that. A lot of Detroit publishing in there. Uh, and this is my other, my last shelf I have. I'm probably going to have to get another shelf very soon. <laughs> As you can see, I don't really have much room left. Um, got a whole box of RPPCs right there. But there are RPC, RPPCs sprinkled throughout pretty much every box. But that's just the box of mostly identif unidentified RPPCs. And, uh, you know, I put some notes on the end of those if I thought a box was especially, like, nice. <laughs> and then most of those are not identified. This huge box right here is pretty amazing. So I am so lazy that I don't really list anything other than postcards. And when I find things other than postcards, it eventually ends up in this box. So these are all oversized postcards letters some as old as the 1800s i don't think any earlier than that <laughs> photos and then just a mix of ephemera so trade cards brochures cabinet cards uh mounted photos all types of things all types of really cool things and a ton of identified stuff um there's like cabinet cards of railroad depots in there street scenes uh, really neat old letters. All types of stuff is in there, but it's just that I'm too lazy to list, and hopefully we'll figure out something to do with this box someday. Uh, and that's just more postcards. If I got something from a collector and didn't have, or like their boxes well enough, I would just leave it in there, as I did with that. And the last little spot that I haven't showed you yet is the area over here where I plan to record videos, and I tried to set it up how my recording space looked on our old apartment. <laughs> Obviously, I couldn't make it look exactly the same, but as you can see here, I'll put my camera or my phone right here, and then, you know, it won't look exactly the same, but oh gosh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I'll probably be recording a few videos right there. I really like doing the ones at my computer now because that's so much easier, but, you know, I want to do a few more like this too. 
And that actually is something my sister got me for my birthday, which I love and put on display. That is a cat that looks like our cat Cleo. And then I have a lot of postcard books. I know a lot of people have asked me what books I have. So I'm not going to talk about them all in this video, but if you want to get a close little view, uh, there are some unrelated ones, but a lot of the postcard ones I have are up there. And then some plants. And that actually is a uh, copy or whatever you call it, print of a Vincent Van Gogh painting of a postman that he did that I have to find a place for on my wall at some point. Um, so that's my office. This is where I work most of the time and that's where I have my shipping supplies and back stock and everything like that. I'll give you another wide out view of the entire space. This is a pretty big room and I don't think I will ever run out of space, hopefully. <laughs> if I do run out of space, I'm doing something wrong. But let me know what you think and let me know if you have any ideas for me. I'm always open to suggestions or how things could be rearranged or better ways to do things. Uh, but let me know what you thought and what you think. Thank you so much for watching.